Hey, you're listening to Guat Rocks, God, the World, and Other Things. I'm Kenny Price, your host. Our mission, always advancing equilibrium in the midst of an agitated world. This is Season 21, Episode 436, title, The High Life, subtitle, Soul Satisfaction Found in the Higher Things of God. Charles Haddon Spurgeon once said, Christians must seek their delights in a higher sphere than the insipid frivolities or sinful enjoyments of the world. Vain pursuits are dangerous to renewed souls. My friend, this cat back in the 1850s had his act together, and he had an amazing command of the English language. And he made the statement, Vain pursuits are dangerous to renewed souls. This profound statement carries a timeless truth that resonates deeply in our contemporary lives. In a world filled with distractions and temptations, it is crucial for Christians to find their joy and satisfaction in the higher things of God, rather than the fleeting pleasures of this world. Spurgeon's use of words is picturesque and challenging. He speaks about insipid frivolities. Insipid frivolities refers to activities or things that are both dull and lacking in meaningful substance. Something insipid is bland, uninteresting or lacking in flavor or excitement. In a metaphorical sense, it refers to things that don't engage or stimulate the mind or emotions. Frivolities are activities, objects, or behaviors that are trivial, lighthearted, and lacking in serious purpose or value. Putting these two things together, insipid frivolities, suggests a combination of uninteresting, dull, and meaningless activities or things. This devotional aims to encourage believers to seek their delights in a higher sphere and avoid the dangers of vain pursuits. Today, you are surrounded by countless opportunities for entertainment and distraction. From social media and streaming services to endless shopping and gaming, the world offers a myriad of ways to pass the time. While not all these activities are inherently sinful, they often lead to insipid frivolities. Activities that provide temporary pleasure but leave you spiritually empty. For example, spending hours scrolling through social media can create a false sense of connection and fulfillment. However, this often leads to feelings of inadequacy, jealousy, and discontentment as you compare your life to the highlight reels of others. Instead of seeking validation through likes and comments, you should find your worth in Christ, who loves you unconditionally and values you beyond measure. Sinful enjoyments, on the other hand, are those activities that directly contradict God's commandments and lead you away from Him. These can include behaviors such as gossiping, indulging in substance abuse, engaging in sexual immorality, or harboring unforgiveness. These pursuits not only damage your relationship with God, but also harm your soul and those around you. Consider the story of a young professional who feeling the pressure to succeed, turns to excessive drinking and partying as a way to cope with stress. While these activities may offer a temporary escape, they ultimately lead to feelings of emptiness, guilt, and broken relationships. By turning to God instead of these harmful behaviors, you find peace, true peace, and strength to face life challenges. Spurgeon's call to seek delights in a higher sphere is a reminder that the Christian is set apart for something greater. Your joy and fulfillment should come from your relationship with God and the pursuit of His kingdom. This higher sphere includes engaging in activities that draw you closer to God and reflect His love to others. Here are some practical ways you can pursue the higher life and enjoy a robust life full of all the gusto God has for you. Do you see how I got my favorite words here? into this podcast, but I'm telling you, my friend, uh, it's just become clear to me that there are some key words in my life that have so much meaning for me, and that is the high life, a robust life, and a life full of gusto that God has for you. But here are some suggestions. Number one, cultivate a rich prayer life. Prayer is a powerful way to connect with God and seek His guidance. Set aside regular times each day to pray not just for your needs, but also to thank God for His blessings and seek His presence. 
Consider starting a prayer journal to record your prayers and God's answers, which can deepen your faith and bring you joy as you see His hand at work in your life. Number two, immerse yourself in Scripture. God's Word is the source of wisdom, comfort, and direction. Make it a habit to read the Bible daily, meditate on its truths, and apply its teachings to your life. Join a Bible study group or find an accountability partner to help you stay committed and gain new insights from the scriptures. Perhaps you have a work associate who is also a Christian who is also in pursuit of the high life with God. You could reach out to them and meet once a week at break time or lunch and share together in a specific Bible reading devotion plan like Oswald Chambers' My Utmost for His Highest or C.H. Spurgeon's Morning and Evening. Both of these are available online for free. I think they're also available for free as an app. Number three, engage in worship. Worshiping God through music, song, and other forms of creative expression can lift your spirit and bring you closer to Him. Attend church services regularly. Participate in worship activities. And create a personal playlist of worship songs that inspire and uplift you. Number four, serve others. One of the most fulfilling ways to experience God's love is by serving others and showing His love to them. Look for opportunities to volunteer in your church or community. Help a neighbor in need or support a charitable cause. Acts of service not only bless others, but also bring a sense of purpose and joy to your own life. Number five, man, this is important. Build godly relationships. Surround yourself with fellow believers who encourage and support you in your faith journey with Christ. Join a small group or community within your church where you can share your struggles, celebrate your victories, and my friend, that's just as important as sharing your struggles, but having a group of people with that care about you, care about what you're involved in, care enough to listen to your celebrations of victory, and grow together in Christ. Imagine a young couple, both busy with demanding careers, struggling to find time for each other in their spiritual growth. They decide to set aside one evening each week for a spiritual date night. They spend this time praying together, reading the Bible, and discussing how they can apply its teachings in their lives. This practice not only strengthens their relationship with each other, but also deepens their connection with God, bringing them true joy and fulfillment. Does that sound like a foreign idea to you? Have you actually ever done something like that? My friend, it is amazing. It is fantastic. I highly encourage you to do it. If you haven't done something like that, consider the story of an elderly widow who, instead of succumbing to loneliness, chooses to volunteer at a local food bank. Through serving others, she finds a renewed sense of purpose and joy. She also forms meaningful relationships with those she serves and the other volunteers creating a new community of support and love. A college student, overwhelmed by the pressures of academics and social life, decides to start a Bible study group in her dorm. Through this group, she finds encouragement and accountability, helping her stay focused on her faith and navigate the challenges of college life with God's guidance and peace. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. That's found in John chapter 10, verse 10. This abundant life is found not in the fleeting pleasures of this world, but in a deep, personal relationship with Him. As we seek our delights in a higher sphere, we experience the fullness of joy that comes from knowing and serving God. My friend, in a world filled with insipid frivolities and sinful enjoyments, Christians are called to seek their delights in a higher sphere by cultivating a rich prayer life, immersing yourself in Scripture, engaging in worship, serving others, and building godly relationships, you can find true joy and fulfillment in your relationship with God. Let Spurgeon's wisdom encourage you to turn away from vain pursuits and embrace the higher calling of a life devoted to Christ. My friend, that's where it all comes to rest, is turning away from vain pursuits and embracing the higher calling of a life devoted to Jesus. In doing so, you will discover the abundant life He promises and the lasting joy that comes from walking closely with your Savior. And with that, my friend, I bid you peace.